How many of you are a clean freak? Any clean freaks in the house? <laughs> okay, some smiles going up, so I know probably they have some intentions of being a clean freak. How do you say a person is clean or not? How do you say a person is clean? Is it by the dress they wear? Or is it how tidy they are? How many of you love to keep your house clean? Right? You all know, you all know how to keep your house clean. Some of you, you know, you, your house is clean, but it's never tidy. That's the only problem, right? They are clean. I know they're clean, but it's not tidy, right? And, um, and we spend so much of time and money and cleaning, your, cleaning yourself, cleaning your homes. And we want to make sure that everything is perfect. So today's, today's, we want to make sure that everything is not messed up. So today's sermon title is called Messed Up But Clean. I'm messed up, but I'm clean. That's the title today. I'm going to talk from John chapter 15. It's about the wine and the vineyard where Jesus talks about it. Next week we're going to say about I'm messed up, but I'm fixed. But today we're going to see about I'm messed up, but I'm clean. So let's go to John chapter 15 verses 1 to 5. John chapter 15 verses 1 to 5. I'll read it. It goes like this. I am the true wine and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3. And this is where we are going to bank on today. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branches cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the wine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the wine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. This is a chapter all about wine, about how you are planted, you are in, uh, that you are grafted in to the to the wine which is Jesus into the branches and we're going to see all that next week about abiding in Jesus fixed up in Jesus but today I want to talk about something which Jesus said in the middle of that when he started to say about the wine and the uh, the grapes and the bearing fruits and all Jesus adds one thought in the middle and it struck me so much in that there is so much of meaning in that one verse which is on verse 3 John 15 verse 3 it says already you are clean Because the word that I have spoken to you. That's how it says in the Bible, right? Already you're clean. I asked you in the question, how many of you are clean? How many of your houses are clean? But here Jesus says, you are already clean. Can you put your hand on your chest and say, I'm clean. I'm clean. (laughs) Tell your neighbor and say, I don't care, but I'm clean. (laughs) I don't care what you think, but I'm clean. Okay. No matter what, Jesus said, you're clean. Alright, that's what he said. And how do you keep yourself clean? How do you keep yourself clean? And the best way you keep yourself clean is soap, right? You use soap to wash yourself, right? There are different kinds of soaps, right? There is handmade soap, factory made soap, different sizes, shapes, colors, different smell, different types of soap. You have soap for your clothes, you don't use that to wash, take a shower, right? There is different soap for your hair, different soap for your body, I believe there is different soap for your face also. I don't use that. I use normal soap. But there is there's liquid soap, hard soap, brown soap, oily soap, fatty soap. There are different kinds of soap. And it's soaps to clean your floor. Soaps to clean your dog. It's not the same soap. It's different kind of soap. It's so different. So many kinds of soap you have now. Liquid soap, hand soap, sanitizers. All to keep yourself clean. But this was not the case 2,000 years ago. When people in those days had to keep yourself clean, there wasn't a soap. There wasn't soap at all. In fact, soap was so expensive that time that you had to pay a fortune to get a soap. People used to use certain kinds of soap. It's not like the soap that we have now, made from vegetable oils and things like that, but very expensive. It used to use for, used for industrial purpose only. But now, after the 18th century, and in the late 18th century, 19th century, it's when the affordable soaps came into people's hand where you can wash something. So how is it that people in those days used to keep themselves clean? In fact, cleaning themselves, keeping themselves neat and tidy is so much important in the Old Testament. 
times. And you, you clean yourself from dirt, you clean yourself from germs, and there is something called cleaning yourself from sin. That's also talked about in the scriptures. In fact, there was a test done in University of Arizona, and they wanted to test and see how clean is your dish sponge and the cloth that you wipe the dishes. So they did a study of 500 homes. They took the sponge that you used to clean the dishes and the cloth that you used to wipe and tested in the labs. They found that two-thirds of this cleaning sponges have bacteria and some of them serious bacteria. And this cloth that you clean, one-fifth of them have bacteria. Even the bacteria of, you know, the one um, salmonella, even that's found in these cloth. So the next time you wash the dishes, remember, it need not be fully clean. <laughs> yes, you have the satisfaction of using a soap and, uh, and using steel wool and, you know, scrubbing it, scrubbing the metal off. Yeah, you might do that too, but it need not be still clean. We all look at cleaning outside of our bodies, right? But how many of you thought about inside your body? I know some presidents one time said about drinking Clorox to clean inside the body also. You all know that? Yes, that's also there. So you might think you can drink Clorox and soap to clean your inside body, but is that the kind of cleaning inside which Paul talks about? In fact, cleaning inside and outside was so important in the Old Testament that Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said in Matthew 23, 26, Matthew 23, 26, Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, you blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate and then that the outside also may be clean. So what Jesus was telling is, you Pharisees, looking so much at the outside, that you don't look at the inside. So his analogy, he's brought here the cup. You look at so much about it, it should be look clean from outside, but inside it's still dirty. We need to keep things clean. And this was so important. It is a big thing in society. In fact, the society in the Old Testament time was not about if you're rich or poor. It's not about social injustice. But it's about whether you are clean or unclean. The whole of Old Testament, you can see situations of people classified as clean and unclean. The people of God were in fact told to obey certain laws and certain rituals to keep away from any kind of infiltration because God said, you need to remain clean. And that is what the Old Testament talks about. So in Mark chapter 7, Pharisees brought up an important point. Because Jesus and his disciples didn't follow everything what they wanted to do. Mark chapter 7 verses 1 to 5. Read like this. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that was unwashed. Ha <laughs> The disciples didn't know how to wash their hands. You might be thinking, you know, see, I'm telling you to wash your hands before eating because the Bible tells to wash your hands, Right? Anyway, the disciples didn't wash their hands. What he's talking about is not the normal kind of washing that we do. It's a ceremonial washing that they're talking about. Verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. Verse 4. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as washing of the cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And verse 5, And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Look at that. Look at verse 4. What does it say? They had many other traditions they observe in washing of the cups, the pots, copper vessels. And what's the last thing there? Dining couches. In fact, you know, it's like, in, like, like, like the evolution people do nowadays. It's like the cleaning. That kind of, there is traditional some kind of cleanings you have to do. Before eating, we wash hands, face, everything. And then they have the washing of the plates. And the washing of the couches. Can you imagine? Before you sit on your chair to eat food, you have to <laughs> make sure that is clean. Because the germs might <laughs> creep in. I don't know how it's going to creep in, but this, this is what they used to do. They were so much uh, obsessed with cleanliness, cleaning, that they had a ritual for every kind of cleaning before doing anything. They were so obsessed with the fact they had to clean. 
Imagine if Pharisee goes to a restaurant to eat. He has all the rituals he has to do. And even for the chair and to table, everything before you start eating. They were so conscious or rather obsessed with cleaning that they had so much of rituals. In fact, traditions were more than the Torah which said about how to clean and how to do certain things. So, if you are a clean freak, let me tell you the Pharisees were a greater clean freaks. They had rules for everything, a different way to do it. We have to pray for food. I'm not saying we should not pray for your food or bless the food. But what does matter more? Is it the cleaning from outside or from cleaning from inside? So, when Jesus, when the disciples, when the Pharisees asked this question, were asked this question, Jesus deals with it in a different way. Mark chapter 7 verse 15. Mark chapter 7 verse 15. The same, the same chapter, verse 15. It goes like this. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of the person are what defiles him. So this is what Jesus answered said. Whatever that he's not, what he's trying to say is not that you should not wash your dishes. What he's trying to say is that is not going to defile you. What is really going to defile you is what is inside which is going to come out. Because this is what is going to defile. And he says an example in verse 20, 23. Mark 7, 20, 23. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles. What comes out of a person? The words that we speak. The words that we speak. What comes out? That is what defiles a person. Verse 21. For from within, of, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. So what Jesus is trying to say is, these things that is inside your heart and which is coming out, like envy, um, sensuality, pride, foolishness, these are the things that is going to defile you. Not how you clean the cup or the plate or the hand or the chair that we sit on. That is not going to defile you. What defiles you is what's in your heart. Think of it. Can you do a certain... You know, the, uh, the Arabs have one way of ablution, cleaning for prayer. The Jews had another way of ablution and cleaning. Do you know in Kerala also we had this ablution? Everybody before coming to the house in those days had to wash your feet and hands and face before coming in. That's also a kind of ablution. You have this kindi and kindi and some things kept at the step of the house outside, brass. Of course, people don't use it now. It's all showcased now. But people have that. That used to use, that is a kind of ablution which people of Kerala do before coming into a house. You have to do that before coming into a house. So this tradition of ablution has been there in every kind of religion and in customs and traditions. It's there because it is practically, you need to keep yourself clean because in those days, you don't have shoes with socks and tied up which is clean. You don't have roads that are clean. You walk on dung, you walk on many other things and then you come in, you can't walk into the house with that. That's why you have all this. So it is good to clean. But think of it. Can any of this ablution really wash your enviness? Can any of this kind of ablution, whether it's Kerala ablution or the Arab ablution or the Jewish ablution, can it cleanse you of your anger? Can this cleanse you of your evil thoughts? The evil thoughts that you have. Can this kind of ablution cleanse you? No, it cannot. That's why Jesus said, what comes out of the mouth is what cleanses you. In Thailand, Thailand New Year is celebrated around the midweek of April. And they have a festival called the Festival of Water. This is Songkuran Festival. Songkuran Festival. This is in Thailand. It's normally in mid of April that they celebrate. And the speciality of this is they throw water on everybody. The speciality is to cleanse people with water. That's what it talks about. That's what it's traditionally about. So you bring elephants to throw water on you. You throw water on people. You throw water on... When you throw water on elders, it has to be scented water, not normal water. Like that is the tradition there. You have to throw water on top of your house. You throw tr water on top of Buddha. You have to cleanse the monks with water. This is a tradition. It's a three-day tradition. There are steps you go about doing it. And if you go to Thailand during this time, better be ready to get wet. 
because people are going to throw water on you the concept behind that is that you that this new year as you enter into the new year you new, you enter into the new year clean as a new being so people throw water all on you the three days and you're cleansed your house is cleansed your car is cleansed your bike is cleansed everything is cleansed and then you enter older people you have to cleanse them also but with scented water okay that's how you do it so but again all the whole concept is trying to be cleansed with so that you become clean with the water this is what they do in thailand but can this kind of cleansing cleanse what is inside so this clean and unclean is so important in our custom in the old testament is very important so what does it mean to be clean what does it mean to be clean the clean here means clean or free from adulterated matter that is also the same word is used for that ceremonial purity that's also becoming clean we're talking about and for moral guilt this is also the guilt the sin we're talking about which we're going to talk about a little bit more in today clean and unclean are we clean are we clean from adulterated matter yes we can do that we all take care of that ceremonially pure jesus has made us all ceremonially pure if you accept him but free from moral guilt this kind of guilt the the sin or something that you did wrong that guilt always plays in our heart and it's very difficult sometimes when that guilt comes in our heart we know you're messed up we know you did wrong and you know that you did wrong but sometimes it's so difficult to accept that forgiveness and to become clean so how did jesus deal with it what did jesus talk about being clean jesus did something very strange just before the passover just before he got crucified and that is washing the feet of the disciples Let's go to John chapter 13 verses 1 to 11. John 13 1 to 11. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that the hour that his hour has come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper when the devil had already put his put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from god and was going back to god rose from supper he laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel tied it around his waist then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was wrapped around him he came to simon peter who said to him lord do not wash my feet jesus answered him what i am doing what i am doing you do not understand now but afterwards you will understand peter said to him You shall never wash my feet Jesus answered if I do not wash you you have no share with me Simon Peter said to him Lord not my feet only but also my hands and my head Jesus said to him the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet but is completely clean and you are clean <clears throat> but not every one of you for he knew who was to betray him that was why he said not all of us are clean So this is what Jesus, he you know the story about him wrapping in a towel and washing the feet of disciples but he says in verse 10 he says verse 10 Jesus said to him the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet but is completely clean then says and you are clean Can you repeat that again and you are clean Can you repeat that again you are clean take that verse as i put the i there i am clean this is who is who is talking here jesus jesus is talking to peter and to the disciples he is not washing them to he is washing their feet not to basically make them clean he is washing them as a sign of servitude of showing what how it should be serving others that's what he's talking about here but he is doing that here but because he, the disciples are already clean the previous verse or key verse we saw where jesus says you were already clean and here again he says here to peter and to the others others who are dining there what is it you are clean tell your neighbor who is sitting next to you if somebody is sitting next to you i am clean i am clean i am clean 
Can you tell your neighbor again? I may be messed up, but I'm clean. <clears throat> yeah, tell it to your children. Parents need to tell your children, I am messed up, but I'm clean. <laughs> you can do that too. Can you imagine this? Whom is he saying this to? Peter. And what does Peter do after this? Next day, what does Peter do? This is Passover before he's taken out. Next day or the day after, whichever is the time frame, we're not sure about it. But the next day, the same Peter who is made clean by Jesus betrays Jesus. Can you imagine that? The same Jesus, the same Peter, where Jesus said, You're clean, you're clean. But the same Jesus goes and betrays Jesus. Now you might have messed up and done certain things in life, like Peter. You might have messed up. But today, study the scriptures and realize the same Peter who messed up is the same Peter to which Jesus said, you are clean. It doesn't matter what you do. It is, your cleanliness is not based on what you do or how you perform. Your cleanliness is because he made you clean. And you need to accept that fact. You need to accept the truth down inside. I may be messed up, but I am clean. I might have done horrible things, but today I am clean. Judas also betrayed Jesus. Judas also betrayed Jesus. But Judas could never come back because inside him he wasn't clean. The verse 11 that, verse 11 that we saw, for he knew who was to betray him that is why he said, not all of you are clean. Whom Jesus is referring to here? Judas Iscariot. And why Judas Iscariot? Because the devil already came in. The previous verses we saw the devil already came in and resided inside him. The one who has got the devil in is the one who is unclean. But you guys are clean. You might make mistakes, but let me tell you, you are still clean. I, I want this truth to set into your heart and I want you to be I want to you to be set free today when you leave from here. No matter what I do, it doesn't count of whether I am clean or not. I am made clean already. Imagine the the woman with the shoe of blood. She was unclean. She was, she felt unclean. And the, you know the issue of blood in those days is not like a easy thing now. It's a, it's not a, it's, it's a joke. It is not something that happens every month, but this girl was happen this lady was suffering for years, twelve years. You can't walk around. You're afraid what's gonna happen. You're afraid who's gonna notice whether it's gonna stain your dress or not. You're afraid, you don't know how to walk around. It's not something like you had soap at that time to wash yourself off. It's not something that you had cloth or rags to cover it and then you had plenty of rags to use and throw. You couldn't do that. This is a woman who suffered with the issue of blood for 12 years. She didn't know what to do. When she believed and she said, if I could only touch the hem of the garment and I will be made clean. I wish I can be clean. If I could be touch the tip of his garment and Jesus heals her and her faith had made her clean. It is from inside that you are made clean. <clears throat> leprosy in those days was very bad. It was a terror to have leprosy. Any kind of skin disease was considered as leprosy. So today, if you woke up in the morning, looked at the mirror and you had a pimple on your face, boom, you have leprosy in those days. That is literally classified as having, or something like that. You know, you had to show to high priest and if he says it's infectious, you're unclean and you have to be cast outside the city wall. Jerusalem, the city wall, and you're roaming outside. You cannot come inside. People probably used to throw food out for you. You can't mingle with others because you're unclean. That is how the situation was in those days. People were treated horribly if you had something called leprosy, which was considered as unclean. And every time you walk around, you're supposed to say, unclean, 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 if you see some people coming by, because they should know that you are unclean. So that the basic concept is so that this disease doesn't spread to other people. But it's a stigma to be unclean on the outside also. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 4. Jesus meets an unclean person and this is how he says. Matthew 8 1 to 4. When he came down from the mountain great crowds followed him and behold a leper came to him and knelt before him saying, Lord 
If you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. So Jesus heals a leper man. So these, these people are outside the city always. They cannot come inside the city. Roaming out. Imagine living outside the city wall. Imagine living quarantined outside. Now in this coronavirus, you're all quarantined, you're locked inside. In the Old Testament days, if you had leprosy, you're quarantined outside. <laughs> Which is better? <laughs> outside or inside? Both are bad. <laughs> I was quarantined for two weeks in my house. I know how it feels to be quarantined. It's horrible. It's depressing. But imagine being quarantined outside, no home to stay outside, roaming around. And then there are friends like you who have leprosy also. You gang up with them, you party with them probably. And that's what 10 lepers met Jesus also along the way and said, Lord Jesus, can you heal me? And they also got healed. Luke 17, 19. And he said to them, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. So it is the faith of these people that has made them well or made them clean. This clean concept is so important. You don't realize it now. In this world now, in Kuwait, you're thinking about <clears throat> when you'll get your salary, how much bank balance you'll have, or will your job go or not. That's what is concerned. The economic, socio-economic structure is what's concerned in the society here. If you go to the uh, but maybe uh, in Europe or America it's about the rights, human rights that's the main thing, do I have the rights, I have the rights black life matters and all that stuff Asian, brown life matters, they all fight for that, that is the important thing in those society but in this society the Old Testament society it is basically on whether you are clean or unclean and this uncleanness that you get, not just on the outside but it happens because, like the previous verse, you said Satan was dwelling in them, right? And it happens also because of unclean spirits, the Bible says, something called unclean spirits that dwell in certain people. Matthew 10 verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And he called to him his disciples and gave them authority over, over what? Over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Unclean spirit. Jesus says, you, Jesus called the disciples and said, I'm giving you authority. Cast out unclean spirit. So there are these unclean spirits that dwell in people's heart, like what happened in Judah's heart. These unclean spirit dwell, and they bring about sickness, or they bring about issues in life that people were facing. In fact, in Luke 10, 17 says, the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So the disciples, the 12 of them and the 70 of them, by the authority Jesus gave them, they could cast out evil spirits or unclean spirits or demons out of people's life. And when these unclean spirits left them, their bodies healed, they were back to normal. And we see many instances in the scriptures about this. So, my question is, how can you be clean inside? Outside, forget it. Jesus also said, forget it. Keep, keep clean, use shampoo, detergent, whatever you want, use. If you want to use dog soap for your body, if you're so hairy, use it. <laughs> no matter, I don't, don't care. Jesus doesn't care. But inside is what Jesus cares. So how can you be clean inside? And the key is in what Jesus said to them. By what I have told you. So go to John chapter 17 verse 17. John 17, 17. Jesus is praying He's to the Father. He said, Sancti Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is truth. The word of God is what makes us clean. The word of God is what makes us clean. Ephesians 5, 26 to 27. Ephesians 5, 26 to 27. It says that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water and with word, so that he might present to the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, 
that she might be holy and without blemish. So how do we become clean? How does the church become clean? How is Jesus going to keep us clean? That is by the washing of the washing of water with the word, with the word of God. The word of God is what cleanses us. And our key verse was that too. By what I said is what makes you clean. So the words of Jesus, when he, the words of Jesus went to the hearts of the disciples, the disciples' hearts became clean. Today for you and I, we read the word of Jesus from the word of God. We have the Bible today in our hand. The word of God. One is the word of God. And number two is we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us, which reminds us what? Reminds us of the words of Jesus. Jesus spoke the word. We have the written word. We also have the Holy Spirit, which lives in us to remind us of the words of Jesus. That is how we become clean. That is how we are sanctified and we are made whole. Jesus accepts us just the way we are. We don't have to become clean to come to Jesus. Rather, when you come to Jesus as dirty as you are, He makes us clean from the inside. He makes us clean. Have you ever gone to a shower? Think of this. Have you ever gone to the shower and said, I'm too dirty for the shower? Have you said that? The shower looks so clean. Maybe your wife might say that, don't dirty the shower. Right? Your moms would have said that, right? When you come out of the bathroom, keep the toilet clean. How many times do you have to tell you, keep the toilet clean? I'm going to the toilet to keep myself clean. I have to clean the toilet also. We all do that. And we have to do that. Yes. But here, you can never be dirty for Jesus to cleanse you. No matter what happens in your life, no matter what you do, let me tell you, Jesus, His words will set us free. His words will cleanse us in our lives. John 14, 23, this is what Jesus said. Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, again the word, and my Father will love him, and we, that is Father and Jesus, will come in him and make our home with him. Amen. Isn't that so great? If you love him, you will keep his word. When you listen to the word, meditate upon the word of God, that's cleaning you. It's cleaning you. But when you do that too, it not just cleans your heart, it not just cleans your body, but also the father and the son will rest in us and make it a clean house. Have you gone crazy cleaning your house? Let me tell you, there is freedom today. The father and the son is there to clean our house. <laughs> you don't have to clean. Oh, all, all husbands in trouble now. Bible says father and son clean the house. So go clean the house today. Moms are not going to clean the house anymore. Amen. Jesus, his word sets us free. The word of Christ, words of Christ sets us free. This is a time when he can set us free. But a time is going to come when Jesus will come. Not to clean. It'll be bad. It'll burn. You know, you know when soap enters your eyes, what happens? It burns, right? I once was, I was talking to my cousin, I didn't know about shampoo, very years, years long ago. And I used the soap to clean and I burned my eyes and came out red. So I, my cousin asked me, what happened? Why is your eyes so red? I said, you know, I use soap to clean my eyes. So, you know, it became red, you know. So, it burns. And it says, Malachi chapter 3 verse 2. Listen to this very carefully. Malachi 3 verse 2. This is Jesus is going to come back. Okay, But who will be able to endure it when he comes? Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal. And the last part it says, or like a strong soap that bleaches cloth. This is about Jesus. He's going to come, the next time he comes, he is going to come as a blazing fire that you will not be able to stand in front of him. Or he's going to come as a strong soap that will bleach, which means nothing can stand, nothing impure can stand in front of him. He's going to be a strong soap. Rexona. He's going to be so strong that you will be nothing. 
യുനോ കഴുകി കഴുകി ഇല്ലാതാക്കുന്ന പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇതാ ദിസ് വാട്ട് ഇറ്റ് മീൻസ് യു വാഷ് ആൻഡ് വാഷ് ആൻഡ് മേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് നൾ ആൻഡ് വോയിഡ് that is what the scripture says that is what jesus is going to do when he comes he is going to come as a blazing fire and a soap <laughs> look at that a strong detergent strong soap you will not be able to stand against him or face him but if you have christ in him if you, when he comes in when he is available now you receive him today you receive his word and i want to close with the john 15:3 our key verse john 15:3 let's look at that verse again he said already you are clean because of the word that i have spoken to you amen already you are clean because of the word that i have spoken to you because this remind is a reminder to all of you, if you have listened to jesus the words of jesus if you have read the words of christ every time you read it every time you listen to it meditate upon it you are being sanctified it has nothing to do with you or what you do it's on the word of god that renews you you can't do anything for it the word of god is what renews you renews you gives you life so when you are troubled when you are depressed read the word of god it's going to clean clean you amen turn to your neighbor and say i may be messed up but i'm clean you know how the britishers say i may be messed up but clean i may be messed up but clean so tell to you tell with an attitude i may be messed up but i am clean i am clean even shall we stand shall we close in prayer shall we close in prayer thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus for your word thank you jesus for everything that you've told us lord because you said nothing other than what your father has told you and whatever we hear that is written about you that you've said is what the father wanted us to hear and listen and thank you for speaking that to us lord thank you for coming here and dying for us on the cross and thank you lord that this that this this words of yours the logos word of yours renews us sanctifies us sets us free every day it sanctifies our soul day in and day out thank you lord for setting us free that you are already clean that we are already clean thank you for this word that we are already clean and sanctified our spirit man is already clean and sanctified and every time we listen to your word again and again our soul is getting sanctified and we know lord that one day when you're coming in your second coming in the rapture that our bodies are going to be sanctified too and completely and whole it's going to happen we believe that thank you jesus thank you for the promise that you've given us and thank you for setting us free lord and thank you for making us all clean lord thank you it's such a blessing lord to know that we are clean that we don't have to leave outside or quarantine outside the city walls that we don't have to be worried about what people will think of us or we don't have to be worried like the woman with the issue of blood who couldn't walk around much because she'll afraid she will stain and show her uncleanness lord thank you for cleansing us lord from the inside out thank you thank you holy spirit and and this holy spirit that lives in us is going to set us free is going to heal our bodies too If anyone is sick now anyone is ailing now let's receive that healing in our bodies in our lives let's receive that healing in our bodies for our children if our children are sick let's receive that healing for our children because the unclean spirits have left sickness cannot stay or rest in our bodies and let's claim that promise let's claim if our hearts are clean if our inside is clean then our bodies should be clean it will fight every kind of bacteria and virus Thank you Jesus. Thank you Father for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for teaching us from your word. We bless you, we love you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well pastor for the benediction. Let's receive the benediction. May the love of the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. And church say, Amen. God bless you all.